Alright, right, what's up YouTube? Uh, here we have Ray Dyer with uh, his... What did you do this weekend? Uh, I got top 8 at YCS office nice. with uh, my Ray Dyer. My Ray Dyer? You a female person? Yeah, the skyscraper here. Very, uh, I did not play Diablos like uh, the other builds did in Top Cut. Uh, so, yes, just get in the profile. Um, I played 3 Ray, very standard. Uh, I only played a sec because her name is Ray. Uh, and then the other monsters, I played three Ash. Um, I don't think I need to explain uh, Ash. She's like very good, uh, good against all the decks of the format. Uh, next, I played three Ghost Bell and two Cherries. Uh, so the reason why I chose these two were because I was really scared of the Nightmare decks, um, Goki, Spiral, whatever it was, um, and I just wanted an answer for either like rematch or double helix. Um, and just not to get blown out game one by like any nightmare boards. And the, like this also covered areas in like the Trickstar matchup with uh, Kagri or like Lily Bell um, or even Reincarnation and Grave. Uh, this, if I was playing as Trickstar, I would just like do Borload or whatever. Um, ended up working out fine. Um, I just I would just side these out against like Trickstar up here, uh, except for this against here, yeah, obviously. Uh, that's it for the monsters. Uh, next, for spells, I played 3 Engage. Uh, this is pretty obvious. Uh, 3 Widow Anchor. Um, this is, uh, in my opinion, like, this is like probably the best spell in the deck. Uh, just because early, early game, it's like your effect negation, but in the late game, it's how you push for game. Uh, and a lot of people have said that this deck has problems pushing for a game, uh, which I agree with, but uh, this card really helps you like close out the game uh, in those in the late game scenario. Uh, next is three Hornet Drones. Uh, that's just your six, uh, three, fourth, fifth, and sixth copies of Ray. Uh, and then next is two Afterburner. Um, I've seen a lot of lists play one, some lists play two. I chose to play two because uh, in this deck you want to be as greedy as possible with your uh, with your searches so and your Kagri effects so when you go engage and then you add like whatever uh, like drones or something and then you go Kagri uh, and then you can go engage uh, add uh, after murder and then draw one and then your next turn um, you don't have to like go Kagri link your next Kagri into like after murder you can go uh, engage and then get the second after murder. Um, so that's why I play two. And then next I play two field spell. Um, field spell is like another, like, I would say like a starter card. Um, it helps get your engine going. Um, and if you don't have like a way to get to Ray, like if you can send this to Grave somehow, then that's a way to get to Ray. Um, next I played one jamming wave. Uh, this is like Afterburner, but just like slightly worse in my opinion, because uh, it targets the back row. I prefer to not target the back row. Uh, Shark Cannon was really good um, in the mirror and versus Trickstar. You could just chain it to the Reincarnation Grave or you just banish their ray in the mirror. Um, Goki was also alright against when they just like rematch. You just banish one of the targets. Uh, and then here is something that I don't see a lot of lists doing. Uh, I only played one multi roll. In my opinion, this is not the win condition of the deck. Like, you don't actually need to like be setting all your spells back in grave every turn because when you do that, you actually decrease the amount of spells in your grave, and then they don't go back to the grave. So that's just uh, it makes your link monsters like a lot weaker. But it is like good for help like recycling like widow anchors to help like push for a game like I said earlier. Um, and then the last one would is uh, Hercules base. Uh, Hercules base was really good for grinding and for things like scapegoat. Uh, when your opponent scapegoats, if you're able to force out with the afterburner or jabbing wave, you can go escape, uh, equip this to the link monster, attack, attack two tokens, and then draw two cards. And basically, if you do that, that's usually game. Um, so that's usually how I was able to beat Trickstars was like this card. Um, so that's it for the engine spells. Uh, next, two terraforming to search the two field spells. Uh, I, I like two and two because like even if you drew like the terraforming and the field spell, you could always just set the terraforming and uh, area zero it away. Uh, and next was call, two called by the grave. Um, I originally had this at three in my uh, first list, 
but I was at 41 cars with upstart and I didn't really want to do that so I just cut I chose to cut this down to two um, it was still good uh, going first against like Goki even or any deck you just put side in going first and any hand traps if you see this any hand traps become like inert or even if you don't see it or even if they don't hand trap you you can still use it on like ray effect or any Goki effects when they go to grave or even like uh, against Ultra Geist, like Melisic and stuff like that. Um, next, I played three Foolish Goods and one Metal Foolish Fusion. Uh, so Foolish Goods, uh, in combination with Ray, acts as a your fourth, fifth, and sixth copies of Engage. Um, if you do happen to see Goods with uh, Engage, then you can just send Fusion, and that becomes a two-card uh, Engage draw one combo. So, uh, and then Fusion. Fusion isn't, I don't really consider it a brick, but I would never actually play two because it's only once per turn. You don't actually want to draw it that often. Um, it's not bad if you draw, but you, like, you just still don't want to draw it. Um, and then next was one upstart and one reta. These were just like filler spells, consistency. Um, just lets you thin the deck while also putting a spell in grief. Um, and then the last two cards in my main were two trap cards, two impermanents. Um, this brings up the total uh, hand trap count to 10 cards, including uh, the impermanences. Um, these were like pretty fantastic all day, actually. Uh, I hit Kagri's, I hit Double Helix, I hit Nightmares, I hit, um, what else did I hit? I hit Firewall Dragon in top 32. Uh, uh, it pretty Did good. it come up where, um, like a lot of people were saying the ruling where it was like following to Crave for some reason? Or like, did you have that come um, up? Because I heard Goki yeah. players saying that. And yeah, I, I actually did. I found out about the ruling like right before Top Cut actually. And I did do that to my opponent. Um, it, that, that was the only time though. I only played two Gokis in the entire <laughs> tournament. Um, so it didn't come up that much. Yeah, to I, don't think, I don't think it was correct. Yeah. But, like, they were saying that it was weird. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if that was right, but uh, moving on to the extra. Uh, played three Kagri, uh, like obviously, and then three Kagri, three Shizuku. Uh, so a lot of the, so obviously Kagri is like really good, um, like for looping engages and like just pushing her advantage. Uh, but how you can easily lose is if you don't, if you aren't careful with uh, how many of these you have left in your extra. So usually, like on the Shizuku, like usually people are on the first Shizuku, people will try to search engage, and then uh, on the second and third Shizukus, that's like where people like really like don't really understand, in my opinion, like what to do. So like on the second and third, on the second one, I usually search like air zero or multi roll. And then, um, so that I can have a way to get, uh, somehow a way to get Ray. Uh, usually area zero though. Uh, a, get way to, a way to get Ray on the field if they happen to out uh, my, like, my Ray engrave or whatever. And on my third one, I search Hercules base, because on my third one, that means I'm like low on Link monsters, and I use uh, area zero that I search with the second one to recycle all my Link monsters with Hercules base. Um, and then for the non uh, Sky Strikers, I played one Mermaid. Uh, this didn't come up. This probably should have been the Link Rebo, which would I found myself missing a lot in throughout the tournament. Played against two Lost World Dinos, um, which kind of just the tokens just sat there and I couldn't activate any spells. Um, so Link Rebo would have been good there. Um, also, there were times where I just had like tokens on my side of the field that I couldn't actually link away for like a bar load, which was a problem. Uh, next I played one Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, this was fantastic actually. Uh, I hit like floodgates, I hit um, scapegoats to force them out before the battle phase. I hit uh, a lot of problem cards really. Um, and then I also played uh, Claire and Rushka. Uh, these, this was for uh, Secret Village. Um, I was pretty afraid of that. I ended up actually playing against one deck. It was like a pure Wind Witch deck. They played Secret Village, um, uh, but the, the, he, he never actually established the lock, so like this actually never came up. Um, but I did make this to get rid of a normal summon Candina like, on the field, because I had no way of getting rid of it other than her. So I just used summoned her. Uh, next, I played 
one Trisbana. Uh, this was actually pretty good. Um, like in time, you can push for damage. Uh, it's a big link three, um, and you can just like, if necessary, you just like use it as a stepping stone for like your link fours or like Firewall Dragon. Uh, Firewall Dragon, I summoned actually like twice in the tournament, just cause like if you actually steal link three, like that in a link three, like you can still go into link four. Uh, with like your opponent's link threes that you take from Widow Anchor, so Firewall Dragon I found was pretty important for that. Also, I used it as a cherry's target against Goki. Um, I chose this over a soul because, in my opinion, like uh, Goki actually can't play without this card, uh, which is why I also chose to impermanence this card rather than the sold. Uh, similarly, uh, Borload just like the stable rank four. I think every link deck should just play Borload. Um, and then the rest, my last cherry's target was one double helix. Uh, again, I, I, I said I was like afraid of nightmare boards, and double helix was just probably the best one. And then my last two extra deck monsters were Utopia and Utopia Lightning. Um, this was mainly for awakening the dragons or any like big problem monsters I found myself like facing. Um, I didn't want to like main deck any like one card like a uh, limiter removal or anything just so I could like cheese my way to like out those monsters. I'd rather just have an extra deck monster at my disposal. Um, overall, the, these were pretty okay. Um, I did find myself wanting uh, a Nightmare Cerberus occasionally, um, but I'm not really entirely sure what I would cut for that yet. Uh, maybe the Claire and Rishka, probably not though, because I felt pretty safe just having her in my extra. Um, and then for a side deck, uh, Pretty standard, I guess. Uh, I played triple sphere mode. This was going second against all the nightmare decks. Uh, triple shared ride. This was for going first and second in the mirror, I guess. Uh, but mainly for going first against like Goki, Trickstar, the mirror, basically everything. This is new maxi. Um, it was actually, I actually didn't draw too many cards off this. Like, it always got like a uh, twin twister or something before I could actually resolve the effect. Or like, my, and then my opponent would never like allow me to draw. Uh, next, I played two twins. Uh, this was really good uh, since like the entire tournament, like top tables was like Trickstar and uh, Tri Sky Striker Trickstar. So like, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Blue Eyes player, yeah. right? <laughs> I would. I basically I decided this in a lot. I probably like going forward. I probably like main deck this. Uh, I don't know what I take out of, out for yet. Probably one of the hand traps. Uh, next, I cited uh, one eagle booster actually. So I cited this going first uh, against uh, actually first and second, but mainly first uh, and I guess the trickstar uh, variant and the pure variant. So like um, I would just like either the goal is to just like get three spells in grave um, and then well not even three spells just like get this in your hand and then if you like your hand is bad enough, or like like average enough, where you just like make Shizuku, but you don't you didn't have an engage play. You just hold this in your hand, and then uh, you end phase Shizuku, and then if they ash it, you just chain this. Um, so that's a way to like ensure that your Shizuku resolves because uh, without this card, my Shizuku got ashed like a lot, and it was like very annoying and it was hard to play without it. Uh, next, I played three Typhoon. Um, this was just mainly for floodgates like Anti-Spell, Order, uh, Secret Village, um, and then uh, I didn't find myself playing against those kind of floodgates a lot. I actually found myself citing this in for Light Stage. Uh, so whenever they go to activate Light Stage, I just flip this, no search, and then, um, or whatever, because, and even if they have a Light Stage established already, I would still just like use this, so like the next turn they couldn't just like shut off my, uh, my sets. Uh, and then the last three cards were three evenly matched. Uh, evenly matched was like just for going second against like the nightmare decks, basically every deck. Um, it was really good. Trickstar like can just reincarnation away, but you can just like still bluff it if your hand is like extremely bad. Um, but usually it's fine. Um, I actually didn't resolve it against Trickstar that much, but I did against like all the nightmare decks and. Um, and top cut and stuff. So, so Ray, um, 
playing one of the most fair decks in in the tournament. What did you think about like the Trickstar variant? Like, what, did you decide not to play those, or did you just not want to play those? Um, so I actually tested the Trickstar variant like like a few days before the event. Um, I actually just could not win with the deck. I was like just getting my ass handed to me by Brady. He was playing Goki. Um, I just couldn't win, and I was like, it's probably not the deck for me. Uh, so I just. I just chose to play pure because that's what I was testing like up until then. Um, but I do think like the Trickstar variant is like scary. But I do think like if this deck makes it to like turn four or five, or, like maybe turn three, like past turn three, like this deck should win because like it can just like the the cards your card pool to search with engage is just so much better than the Trickstar variant, where like you have so many more toolbox options, but where the Trickstar variant only has like three cards to like choose from. And uh, and like looping with like Kagri, uh, like the more times you resolve engage in one game, like the, your your odds of winning that game like just increase. So um, I think this was like for a long tournament, I think this was the best choice. Uh, but actually I think if the if the time procedure rules weren't changed, I think this deck would have like actually been more represented, um, yeah, because like a lot of my games, like in top in top eight, I was actually in game three. I was like pretty rushed because like we had like five minutes left in the match, and I just like didn't want to like lose he to like afterburner attack for fifteen. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like bad plays. Yeah, I, I just didn't want to lose to like liquor's burn. Right. But uh, what can you do? Is there anything you change in the main? Anything you think you would definitely change before? Because I'm assuming you're playing at like Pando regionals and maybe like nationals or nationals. Yeah, yeah. So um, I probably try to like cater it more for like what the meta will. So like Sakakis uh, ended up being like half the tops for Trickstar. Um, like more actually if you count the pure Trickstar uh, decks as well. So like I probably try to fit in like twins in the in the main rather than like the cherries or the bells or something. Like uh, and permanence is also like didn't end up being that great against uh, Trickstar at least first turn. Like after they use like their licorices, that you get their licorices out of their hand, then you can start actually hitting their candinas with like uh, anchor and impermanence. But until like like going second impermanence didn't really seem that great. Uh, but I probably still play it just because like the Goki decks are really scary. <laughs> Well, damn, I mean, probably like the most fair deck in top eight, probably in the tournament, like you're not meeting shared rides, you're not doing anything else. Uh, just really impressive. Uh, any shout outs, anything you want to say? Uh, those words? Yeah, so I want to shout out to my good friends, Kyle and Abhishek uh, in the China Trip chat. Uh, Kyle, if any of you guys follow Smash, he's also Kalamazoo. He got me the stack box from Japan, pretty cool. Um, next, I want to shout out everyone that play tested with me. So like, Tang, Brady, Chung, Ali, Mike Evans, little Timmy behind the camera. Uh, basically, shout out Timmy. Uh, everyone that play tested with me, uh, they like, I, I learned a lot actually playing against all the different decks. Um, and then special shout outs to Tang for lending me a bunch of cards and Ali for like feeding me during Top Cut with granola bars that got from some rando. Um, and then shout outs to my hotel, my hotel group, the Evan Betzig, Mike Thomas, Accuracy Pulling. Uh, Highly boys, Confidential 2.0. Com 2.0, disbanded already. <laughs> uh, uh, next shout outs to the Discord chat, uh, JT, Steve, and Sitek. You guys are homies. Uh, next shout out to Salam and Hamoudi for my lifting buddies. Give me swole and fit for YCS. <laughs> uh, and then uh, shout out to Hector. I guess he didn't lend me cards this time, but he has in the past, so I feel like I should shout him out. And then shout outs to all the locals I attend. Uh, RAW, uh, special shout outs to them. Really, really competitive locals, probably best in Michigan. Uh, just helping me like get better at the game constantly. Uh, Pando for just having 40 man tournaments that with five rounds. Uh, collectible, I just started playing there. Credit's really good. Uh, fun for all and Zish, gosh, <laughs> just throwback shout outs to them. Uh, made me the duelist I am today. Um, so if you're ever in the area in southeastern Michigan, be sure to check any of those stores out. Uh, next, shout out to all the Team RW members for doing this deck profile with me, and shout out to T-Raw behind the camera.
for filming. Close it out, Timmy. Come on. Anything else today you want to No, he already did that part, Timmy. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Uh, yeah. See you guys Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Dino Power. Goodbye, everyone. Dino Power. <laughs>